It's a quest for dangerous game in the heart of Africa. We're hunting Cape Buffalo in Tanzania, where the bulls are absolutely massive. Sense of energy going in on the stock and getting in tight on one of those things, so tight you can smell them. I mean, that's really fun stuff. Here, it's good, come here. Come, come down, quick. It's like a Volkswagen. These things are just gigantic. All right, you guys ready? You're ready, take it. Here we go. It's the best of Africa on this Sporting Classics. Some adventures are found at the crossroads of epic and unforgettable, and they're best enjoyed with a close friend, a companion who cherishes the sporting life just as much as you do. It's someone who knows the magic contained in the simple phrase, opening day, and who understands that the words hunter and conservationist are one and the same, for we've been giving back for generations and sharing the outdoors with someone who celebrates the history, the art, and the romance of this way of life makes for a friendship to last the ages. One where the sound of a snickering horse, the crackling of a mountain campfire, or the whiff of gunpowder will transport you to that same stirring part of the soul. Welcome to Sporting Classics. That old trusted friend who shares your love of adventure and reminds you of the greatest Stop. days of your life. You know, there's some species in Africa you just never get tired of hunting. For me, it's Cape Buffalo, and there's something about Cape Buffalo, obviously the danger aspect, but it seems like every stalk is so unpredictably different, that sense of energy going in on the stalk and getting in tight on one of those things, so tight you can smell them. I mean, that's really fun stuff. I can see he's got big bosses. You let me know. Yeah. He was a good bull. Any, anywhere else you would shoot that bull. You don't think so? No, he's not. But here, early in the hunt, we just decided to pass. Beautiful bull, man. Right? Yeah, sure was. This is lucky day. Yeah. Yeah. I want to be on your Christmas card list, buddy. That was pretty cool. I love buffalo. Buffalo are just fantastic. It was just so fun. I mean, anytime you get in close on a dangerous animal, and, uh, and whether you pull the trigger or not, it's an amazing yeah, experience. Mm. That was awesome. <laughs> just awesome. A return to Tanzania, the top of the pyramid of big game hunting. Friend Steve Hicks and I are with Rungwa Safaris, a legendary outfit with access to some of the continent's best habitat holding Africa's most iconic big game animals. Steve and I have shared some epic adventures and certainly put some heavy mileage on our rugged Negrini gun cases over the years. But this trip was looking to be one for the ages. Steve Hicks and I are, are neighbors at Bray's Island Plantation. We've traveled all over the world now. We've done tons of hunts and fishing trips, and, and he's good company. He's a seriously good hunter and good shot. So it's, it's fun to come to these kind of places and share the experience with somebody who's a kindred soul, who really gets the whole story and, and is just as passionate about this as you are. I've been to Africa many, many times, but when Chris offered this uh, opportunity to come up to Rungwa and hunt Sailand in Tanzania. You know, it's the, uh, it's the holy grail of Africa as far as I'm concerned. I first started coming to Tanzania almost 25 years ago, and I fell in love with the place because the, the wildlife resources in Tanzania, quite frankly, are the best of Africa. You've got amazing numbers of, of parks, of, of wild reserves, and, and huntable ground, and, and it's, it's an area full of some of the best animals, frankly, in all of Africa, especially the Cape Buffalo. You come to Tanzania, you expect big buffalo, tough, mean, hasty buffalo, and they got them. You know, buffalo are one of those animals that um, 
You know, they're one of my favorite animals to hunt because there's never a buffalo hunt that you can go on that there's no excitement. There's always full of adrenaline. Should we move in on him? No. Let's, let's move straight at him. If he stops, just set up the sticks fast. Dagger boys are so much fun to hunt because they're they're out there, ones and twos. You don't have a giant herd. You can get up on these. So it's just a little bit easier to navigate getting in close. And, and to me, buffalo hunting or any dangerous game hunting is all about getting in tight. Right here, right here, right here, right here. Part of that is, is real practical. You want to make sure you make a great first shot because once that animal takes off, a second shot, third shot, or whatever is not going to be typically nearly as effective as, as that very first shot. It's a nice old bull here. Nice old bull. Nice drops on him. Not real wide, but not wide. <laughs> fun, fun. Let's go find a big one. Well, I think the trophy quality in Tanzania is definitely, you know, among the highest in Africa. It's like a Volkswagen. I mean, these things are just gigantic. And these bulls, they're all big, they're all heavy, the bosses are worn down. Like in Maasai land, because of the volcanic soils, the grass and all has a lot more protein. Um, they grow to a bigger size. And um, I think it's just basically the genetics. Yeah, you know, we're just rolling along midday. It's it's the time of day that there isn't much moving and everything big and black like a buffalo is undercover. They want to get out of the sun. Here, it's good to clear. Come, come down quick. I looked under this bush and there was this magnificent bull. He was old, he was he had beautiful classic Maasai land drops. I mean it was a dream bull and he was standing there under the thicket. Get up. So we put Steve on the sticks with his double. OK, when you're ready, take him. All right, you guys ready? Here we go. Get up there, and get up he hammers there. That, that sucker. I just see him buck up. It runs off. Uh, you know, once the first shot starts, you have no idea what's going to happen. You just take the first shot, and away you go, right? And then we started working around to where it had headed. Here's blood here. Down we up. We saw blood, there was plenty of blood, lung blood, etc. cetera. Yeah, he's hit hard. So that gave us some really good confidence that he's gonna be down soon. And we must have followed the blood trail for about 60 yards, and it went into this big thicket. Did he bellow? No, oh, he's just breathing. He had a lot of difficulty breathing, it was very obvious. So we knew it was a good, like a lung shot. So we decided to wait about 15 minutes. We were just waiting for him to, to pass, and then we could go in and recover our animal. Um, not so fast. And instead, this buffalo gets up and he starts rolling out right at us. Oh, there he is. Here, there. Wait. Wait, wait, wait. He's down, he's down. Damn. <laughs> Tough son of a gun, aren't they? Those are tough, tough mothers. Good job. <laughs> Damn, they're shock absorbers for lead, aren't they? Holy gravity. <laughs> that's amazing. What a tough, tough critter. But that's what I'm telling you, these Maasai line ones yeah. are really tough. The death bellow. I mean, he's just worn down. That's a classic warrior right there. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, I think the one I got's right at 40 inches. I mean, beautiful drops. Yeah. Yeah, they're big everywhere, but they're exceptionally big here. Mm -hmm. Really nice hooks. No, he's a beautiful buffalo, man. Yeah. Uh -huh. You know, it's a team sport for sure, and I was super excited with that buffalo. Sporting Classics is brought to you by Winchester, the American legend. Winchester repeating arms. Walther, it's your duty to be ready. Sightmark, make your mark. Boomerx Air Guns, hunt with air. Negrini Cases, ultralight, ultra strong, the pinnacle of Italian design and technology. Animal Artistry, we finish the hunt. Drake Waterfowl, always in season. And by Safari Club International, fight for the future of hunting. Get up there, get up there. 
It has been a blessed hunt so far with Steve on the board after taking a tough and impressive bull. While Cape Buffalo was the number one priority on our agenda for this safari, I also had an opportunity to complete a unique hunting slam while here in Tanzania. So the last wildebeest I had on, on my list, I've taken the blue, the black, and the Nyasa, which has the white chevron on its muzzle. I had never taken a white bearded, and they're only really found here in Tanzania. Let's go down here. You know, they're really, all of them are good. Yeah. But I want to just pick a... Uh... Yeah, let's get the good one. Yeah. Let's get the best one. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. You know, we looked over lots and lots of them, and we finally found a really good bull. See this one here looking at us? Yeah. He's just well past his ears. It's a big one. Doing a stalk on a herd of bulls, it seemed like a simple matter as, as we started. You know, there's a, a bunch of them, they're not overly spooky. They're moving away, but they're not running away. They're feeding, so their heads are down all the time. They're changing Under. positions all the time. So let's just sift through it, but it's always a different game when you're suddenly trying to pick out one animal out of a herd, as opposed to just hunting wildebeest. You right? see the one walking? Yeah. He's behind him? Yeah, okay. See if he clears, huh? Yeah. Got some brush. Yeah. And that, that bull seemed to have like a, a secret service detail around it. He just turned. Yeah. See, these other wildebeest were just always moving just ahead of him. Just as he cleared, he'd be walking away, he'd step behind cover. So it was his cat and mouse game for probably a half hour. I always love to play these cat and mouse games with a herd of animals, where good glass like our Sightmark Optics is absolutely critical. We would acquire, lose, and reacquire that target bull again and again. Now he's moving right. Yeah. yeah, he's one of those two that just walked. Yeah. So you got the tan one, and then he walked off to the right, huh? Yeah until I finally got Shut set up and he, he finally gave us a, an open shot. There's a little window to pull out there. Yeah, you see him there? Is that him? Head down left? Yep. Good. Just drilled him with that 300 wind mag. You see him? Oh, yeah. Yep, there he goes. And uh, delivered the Winchester news and he was down very quickly. Good shot, man. Okay, man. Yeah. It took a while, huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Cat and mouse. It's, Thank you. it's always frustrating when you have so many. No, it's all good. It's all fun. It's all part of the deal. These are beautiful, aren't they? Yeah. Those capes. Mm -hmm. All right, so there's the blue, the black, the Nyasa, okay. and then the uh, white beard. So this is like right. we were saying, the white bearded wildebeest, and here's the white beard, and uh, this gives it its, its name. It's quite a unique species. <laughs> as they're only found here in Maasai Land. <laughs> That's what it is in Africa. It's kind of a dealer's choice. If you're maybe hunting buffalo, but along the way there's four or five or six or seven or eight other species that you might want to take that you haven't taken, you want to hunt again. It's just striking to have so many different game animals in the same relative habitat. Very different than Europe or North America. But that's why you come back. When I'm on the road and I can legally carry, I choose to pack a Walther. A handgun can keep you safe in an urban jungle. Or a spike camp on an elk hunt. It's always good to be prepared for any situation because you never know what's around the next bend. This is such a healthy ecosystem that you've got the apex predators, full of leopards, lots of lions. I've never been to a place that had so many lions. And buffalo everywhere. There's such a large prey base. There's game everywhere. So these cats, these apex predators, have all this food. So it's no wonder that they're hanging out here. Just found this kill here. And it looks like it was some lions here that came and caught this impala. There's a lot of brush here and a lot of the lionesses and younger lions like to hunt in this area and this impala became an easy prey. And when we talk about lion and big game, Tanzania has the highest population of wild lions in the world. Let me go see his mane again. Here we go. See? Simba. Yeah. Did you hear him? Big Take cat, yeah. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah. So what are you thinking? We're gonna hit this up here for buffalo? What I want to do is go up here, 
And you see those hills? Uh huh. On the bottom side, there's some thickets where sometimes, you know, we shoot buffalo. All right. You know, it was one of those overcast mornings, kind of perfect, a little bit cool. And, and so the buffalo we thought would be out in the open a little bit longer grazing and feeding. We spotted this one Daga boy from a distance and he was heading towards this little water hole that we knew. Steve, I'll hand this to you. We're on this back. You know, so we jumped off, we got ready. Got onto one lone bull. We could tell it was a good bull. It was just one of these big, beefy, lone Daga boys out there. And... and we got pretty close to him, and unfortunately, he heard us, and the wind had changed, and he took off. Too aggressive. Should have gone around. We had bad wind. So it was a lot of high and lows. You know, you're so close. You're about to get it done. I think we got to a, within, like, 40 yards, and suddenly the wind changes, and you're back to square one. But he was just in that bush. So we just decided to head towards the water hole, and luckily, we spotted another Daga boy. There's the wolves, and he's 45, 50 yards away. He's aware of us. We see him about the same time. That's a good one. He was near the water. In that instant, we got the sticks up, got the 416 on him, and uh, he gave me that perfect quartering shot. Good. Here. On this side. We should go up and see if we can see him. Gotcha, gotcha, wait, reload. Let's go up here. It's a sick buffalo. Huh? I think a second thing I got into him as well. Did you shoot? I, I, I couldn't. Okay. Right. Right. Just get, let's give some distance so if he comes. Let's go back, come. So at that point, we just waited. We, we stepped back and, and Harpreet's like, look, we're not in a hurry, just let's, let's wait here. But I can hear him in there making some noise. Right, let's see if let's we can death bellow. Yeah. Let's see if we hear the death bellow. Buffalo, when they die, very often do this bah! very audible, very definitive. And then you know you've you've probably got your buffalo and he's probably dead right there. But no it's a rush. beautiful bull. Yeah, no rush. He's not gonna go anywhere. No. Better let him weaken and bleed out. Yeah. There's a lion here. A lion. Just when you thought it couldn't get any crazier, get to go with lions. Want more big game? Check out Chris Dorsey's newest book, Director's Cut, a 400-page full-color celebration of big game hunting. Each signed copy comes with a four-hour companion DVD set. Order today. Sporting Classics is brought to you by Winchester, the American legend. Winchester repeating arms. Walther, it's your duty to be ready. Sightmark, make your mark. Boomer X Air Guns, hunt with air. Sea Run Cases, we pack your adventures and case your memories. Animal Artistry, we finish the hunt. Le Chamou, from the city to the country. And by Drake Waterfall, always in season. We're wading out a wounded Cape Buffalo in heavy bush in Tanzania. This situation always calls for patience and a steady nerve. You see the lioness? He's here. And all of a sudden, out comes the lioness. It's right there looking at us. And she must have been like uh, not even 15 yards from where we were. No fear whatsoever. Brown bears on Kodiak. So while we had these lions on one side, you know, we heard the death bellow in the, in the thicket. And suddenly, this lioness was calling the, the others, you know? So we knew there were more. You hear them? But they're calling others. The lions are. I mean, they have no fear at all, these lions. I mean, they're like brown bears on Kodiak Island. They hear a, a rifle crack, and they assume it's a dinner bell. And they're coming. I mean, they're, they're, they're now calling on the lions. There's two lionesses right here, and they're 20 feet away. So it was just this surreal moment of trying to protect the kill from these, these lions that are, are right there. And uh, so we work around. We're staying in the vehicle. 
and uh, kind of go around top and, and find the dead buffalo and uh, drag that buffalo out of there. Those cats got to be like right there. This is freaking sketchy, man. Yeah, this is a different kind of buffalo hunting here in Tanzania, isn't it? We went in the thicket, tied the horns with a rope, and pulled it out with a truck. Looking crazy, isn't it? We're very edgy. All the guns were still loaded because the, the lions are right there. We knew they were going to stay right there, and, and hopefully until we left, and then they would come in. Nice bull. It's a beautiful one, yeah. That's a great old you bull. You see the drops as well? Yeah, he's just, he's got it all, you know. Mm -hmm. He's 40. Mm -hmm. He is. Yeah. Just carries that mass all the way down, sweeps back, and just mm -hmm. look at the face. I mean, he's an old warrior. If a buffalo could talk, man, mm -hmm. wouldn't it be something? Uh, thank you, thank you. Yeah. And, and look with those lions, eh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we got lions 20 yards away sitting in the bushes right here. I think the most ethical thing is that we take your trophy and we leave a little bit for them. Man. We'll all give them for it. Yeah, all for it. We left a, a little bit of the gut pile there after we quartered that thing up and got out of there. Put up a, a GoPro camera just to see if they would come in and within five minutes, that entire pride was on the, the gut pile and the remains of that buffalo. So they clearly were not gonna leave. The lions were drawn to the kill as I am drawn to Africa. The continent has a pull that calls to a hunter within. And within Africa, Tanzania remains bigger, greater, and wilder than anything else you could imagine anywhere on Earth. Walking across the Maasai Plains with predator and prey, taking a life, and giving back. This is the apex of big game hunting in the world of sporting classics. <laughs>